but you're not the average rider. Simply using the headset spacer, so flat pedals or clipless pedals, there is directly cutting mark for 780 and 760 millimeter. So back at it for another episode. Uh, this time we'll talk about contact points and how to set them up properly for your bike. So out of the box, uh, the bike is set up for the average rider, but you're not the average rider. Um, so it's, it's actually worth taking a bit of time to really setting up the bike that it feels comfortable for you and your riding style. First of all, really note that there is no right or wrong. It's basically only what uh, suits you the best and what will make you the most comfortable on the bike, but also having the most control on it while riding. First topic we're gonna check is uh, bar height. When you wanna set up the bar height, it's important to take a few measurements. So basically how tall you are, how your arm and torso lengths are, how flexible you are, and your riding style. Also, an important point to take, uh, to take in account is your setup needs to be perfect then and cause no back pain or neck pain. If it's the case, it's probably worth redo the whole exercise and recheck it again. So, to adjust the bar heights, how do I do? Simply using the headset spacer underneath or above the stem. So obviously, the less spacer underneath the stem, the more the stem will be lower, the more your weight will be onto uh, forward of the bike. If you add a few spacer underneath the stem, obviously the stack is going to be higher, but your weight is going to slightly a little bit be backwards of your bike. So this is up to personal preference, but we will show you how simply you can do that with actually two tools. Another way of adjusting your stack height is actually using the bar rise. So for example, on all our score bar, the rise is 20 millimeter. You have also other manufacturing uh, having 35, 50 millimeter rise or lower, like flat bar as well. Uh, this is adjustment that are also again down to you. Second topic to adjust your bike correctly for you is the bar width. A lot of you might have known like the old way of you know, calculate your bar width with your shoulder width. Is it true? Yes and no at the same time. Um, like your, your riding environment will also dictate a lot how you will adjust that. For example, if you ride in a super narrow tree forest, you don't want to have an 800 mil bar to yeah, and basically smash all the trees. This is really down to personal, but there is again no right or wrong. We see, we see quite a lot of big riders as well going up to 740 mil, for example, because they ride on super narrow tree lines. How do I reduce the width of the bar? You can simply sew it. We have, for example, on the score bar, there is directly cutting mark for 780 and 760 millimeter. So all the stock bar are coming with uh, 800 millimeter width. A uh, little piece of advice, cut it once, five millimeters for example, do some try. If it's work, that's fine. If not, just cut it down a little bit more and that might be it for you. The third pillar we're gonna check today is uh, an often overlooked one, is uh, what we call bar roll. So basically the angle of your bar within the stem. Why say it's over and over look? Because it sounds like sometimes you go out of the dealer or anything, your bike is set up and you don't look at that first. But actually adjusting that can make surprising difference on how you control your bike. So what does it make the difference? So for example, if your bar is rolled too much backwards, you will have actually a lot of your weight on the inside of your palm of your hands, which can be some compromise. And vice versa, if your bar is rolled too much forward, you will have a lot of the weight on the outside of your palm of the hands. You set it up for once in your garage, you go on the trail, see that it's not working. The good thing, it's super easy to set it up because with just nothing more than a multi-tool, you can actually adjust the bar roll directly on the trail and really make a difference for the, for the ride after. Once you have the stack, the width and the bar roll set up, that's already quite a good setup to, uh, to work on. So the last bit of the, of the setup would be all what's down to the brakes. So for here, I'm just gonna take a few tools into my pocket and get the bike down. Once you go on the bike, in function of your riding style, 
You can run your brakes a bit more flat, a bit more steep. For example, on my side, I like to ride them a little bit more flat. So I will simply just unscrew here. Once you find a little bit the good position, rescrew this bow. To come down to the brake, there is three important factors to set them up correctly. The first one is the position, so where it sits on the, on the bar. The second one is the angle, so obviously what we just adjust. And then the third one, which is quite an important one and depends on the size of your hands, is the reach. So, for example, on the SRAM brakes here, you can adjust this reach by just turning this little button to make the lever going a little bit closer to your bar or extend it on the other side if you have bigger hands. Once your brake is set up, what you can set up afterwards is your shifter position and your dropper post remote position as well. And the last bit that you can check is actually the grips. We spec all our bike with some vertex grips, but this is up to your convenience. So same again, it goes down to the size of your hands. <laughs> so you can really just swap those to a thicker one or a smaller one. So that's the cockpit setup for me. So it's pretty much ready to ride now. So we had quickly to change position, uh, obviously to not disturb more the training of, of the guys. Once you have your setup uh, of your cockpit completely ready, another adjustment you can do is actually onto the saddle. So for this, just gonna put the bikes out of the rack. What we can change here and adjust is, first of all, you need to have the correct saddle heights. Once the saddle heights is set up to your measurement, simply by unscrew those two bolts, you can actually change the angle of the saddle. So for example, here it's pretty flat, but if you live in an area with like super steep climb, where you, your body weight will be really up front, you can actually put the saddle angle really on the front. This will help you to get weight onto the bike and more pedaling efficiency, for example. Another adjustment would be on the horizontal axle, where also by unscrewing those two bolts, you can adjust where the seat is actually standing. So you can put it a little bit more forward, a bit more backward. So the last contact point, an important one, it's down to your feet, is actually the pedal choice. On the market, um, there is two existing ones. So flat pedals or clipless pedals, different sorts. Uh, here you have easier, like more plastic one or metal one. You can really check the height of the pins as well to have better grip. On the other side, on the clip, uh, there is like different manufacturer or different type of uh, clip. So this is obviously down to your own preference. My own preference is flat one for sure. I leave that up to you and uh, to decide also where you ride, how you ride and so on. So yeah, that would be that would be pretty much it uh, in terms of setting up all the contact points on your bike. We see you on the next episode and we're going to continue to watch, uh, what is it, Rocky 7, 8 downstairs? Uh, yeah, let's watch it.